100 Amazing Facts About the Negro with Complete Proof, A Shortcut to the World History of the Negro by J.A. Rogers. This is the 1970 edition and this book is copyright as of 1957. All rights reserved. 100 Amazing Facts Number 1. The white population of New York is a third more illiterate than the Negro one. Now, just to clarify, keyword is, that is to tell you that this fact was made known in the book around the date of the actual publication, uh, which was 19, uh, 1970. So, of course, this fact applied back then, but does not apply in the modern world today. Number two, Benjamin Banneker. A Negro astronomer made the first clock made in America in 1754. Number three, the word coffee comes from Kaffa, Ethiopia, where it was first used and where it still grows wild. Number four, George Washington sent a Negro slave to Barbados to be exchanged for a hogshead of molasses a cask of rum, and other good old spirits in 1776. Number 5. The Negro arrived in the New World free from tuberculosis and syphilis or other venereal disease. Livingstone, the famous African missionary, and a medical doctor says syphilis dies out in the African interior. It seems incapable of permanence in any form in persons of pure African blood. Syphilis originated in Europe in 1494 when there was a great epidemic of it. As this was two years after the discovery of the New World, it was erroneously believed to have been brought back by the sailors of Columbus. Number six, the Negro was the first artist. The oldest drawings and carvings yet discovered were executed by the Negro peoples over 15,000 years ago in southern France, northern Spain, Palestine, South Africa, and India. The drawings are on rocks, the carvings on bone, basalt, and ivory. Number 7. The oldest known representation of the human body is that of a Negro woman. It was carved by a Negro sculptor of Grimaldi race from 10,000 to 15,000 years ago. It is called the Venus of Willendorf after the place in Austria where it was found and is in the Vienna Museum. Number 8. Beethoven, the world's greatest musician, was without a doubt a dark mulatto. He was called the Black Spaniard. His teacher, the immortal Joseph Hayden, who wrote the music for the former Austrian national anthem was colored too. Number nine, Jose Vasconcelos or El Negrito Poeta, born of African Congo parents at Almolonga, Mexico, about 1710, wrote verses that were so popular that they entered into Mexican folklore and were printed annually on the calendars of Mexico until 1872. 112 years after his death. Ancient Civilizations Number 10. The Grimaldi, a Negro race, lived in Europe as late as 12,000 years ago. Two complete Grimaldi skeletons are in the Museum of Monaco near Monte Carlo. Abundant traces of their culture have been unearthed in southern and central Europe. Number 11. Elam, a mighty Negro civilization of Persia, flourished about 2900 BC and is perhaps older than Egypt or Ethiopia. One of its later Negro kings, Kudur Nakunta, conquered Chaldea and Babylon and brought back to his capital, Susa, rich treasures, among which was the famous statue of the goddess Nana. Later, it became the capital of Cyrus, the Great, and Darius. Susa is the Shushan of the Bible where Esther, the Jewess, sought the favor of King Ahasuerus of Persia in Ethiopia. Number 12. Cheops, a Negro, built the Great Pyramid, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. 
It is 451 feet high, has 2,500,000 blocks of granite, each two and a half tons, covers 13 acres, took 100,000 men 30 years to build, and was completed in 3,730 BC. Number 13. There were at least 18 Ethiopian or unmixed Negro rulers of ancient Egypt, the best known of which is Pianki. Leaving his country in Central Africa, Pianki con conquered all Egypt to the mouth of the Nile in 750 BC. Number 14. The Ganges, the sacred river of India, is named after an Ethiopian king of that name who conquered Asia as far as this river. Number 15. The most ancient lineage in the world is that of the Ethiopian royal family. It is said to be older than that of King George VI by 6,130 years. The emperor Haile Selassie I, ruler of Ethiopia, traces his ancestry to King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba and beyond that to Cush, 6,280 BC. Number 16. Negroes lived in America thousands of years before Columbus. Central American monuments show numerous carvings of them as gods. When Columbus came to the New World, Negroes had been crossing from Africa to South America a distance of 1,600 miles. The first white men to reach the American mainland tell of seeing Negroes. Columbus, who visited South America, said that he had heard of them there. Number 17. The present Negro race of Africa perhaps did not originate there, but Asia and Oceania. The earliest inhabitants of Africa were not black, but brown. Today, the peoples of mixed and unmixed Negro descent living in Asia and Oceania probably exceed in number the present Negro population of Africa. India has millions of Negroes. The purest Negro types are in Southern Asia. In 1923, Dr. Joseph Rock, United States Department of Agriculture, discovered a hitherto unknown Negro race, the Nakis, 200,000 in number in southern China. In 1934, E. W. P. Chinnery discovered an unknown Negro people in New Guinea near Australia. He reports that they have a civilization superior to their neighbors who live under white rule. Number 18. In the United States Army drafts in the World War I, the Negro proved physically fitter than the white man. For every 100 men physically examined, the ratio of colored men found physically qualified for general military service was substantially higher than the ratio of the white men by just 5%, namely 74.60 against 69.71. Illiteracy and intelligence. And just a disclaimer, any statistics that I provide in this particular part of the video, just know that these statistics were only discovered around the time of the publication of this book. So these statistics do not apply today whatsoever. Number 19. The peoples of Southern Europe, including Italy, and most of those of Eastern Europe, including Russia, are more illiterate than the Negroes of the United States. In 70 years, Negro illiteracy has fallen off about 80%. In 1870, it was 82%. In 1930, 16.3%. Number 20. Afro-American literacy is three times higher than the white one. Nevertheless, when certain states are matched against certain others, there are surprising comparisons. For instance, the Negroes of California, Minnesota, New York, Nevada, South Dakota, Oregon, and Washington are less illiterate than the native whites of white parentage in Virginia, West Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Kentucky, Tennessee, Alabama, Arkansas, Louisiana, and New Mexico. New York, Minnesota, Oregon, and South Dakota Negroes are less illiterate than Mississippi whites. 
the Negroes of these seven states are less illiterate by 100 to 400 percent than the foreign-born whites of all the states save one. Number 21. In the United States Army intelligence test during World War I, the Negroes of Pennsylvania, New York, Illinois, and Ohio led the whites of Mississippi, Kentucky, Arkansas, and Georgia by from 1 to 7 percent. Number 22. Two centuries ago, the Negroes of South Africa and the Northern Europeans both practiced a form of cannibalism that was strikingly similar. Of the vital organs of slain foes, the Negroes made a muti or charm against evil. Sometimes they ate the heart of a brave man believing that it gave added courage. The Europeans would roast or dry the bodies of hanged criminals. Of these, they made a mumia, a medicine for internal and external use, which was supposed to have a peculiar curative charm. In 1683, when the Germans defeated the Turks at Alphen, Switzerland, thousands of surrendered Turks were treated in this manner. An army surgeon who was present wrote, none were given grace. All were massacred and in most cases they were skinned the fatty parts were roasted, and the genitals cut off, dried, and put into big sacks. And of this, they made precious mumia. Regular cannibalism existed in Germany as late as 1650. Exploration Number 23 Esteban Iso, a Negro from Morocco, was one of a party of four to cross the North American continent in 1536 for the first time. The journey took nine years. In 1539, he headed an expedition that discovered Arizona and New Mexico. Estevanizo's travels served to open up the southwest and the states west of Florida as far as the Pacific. Number 24. The founder of the city of Chicago was Baptiste Pointe de Sable, a Negro in 1779. Number 25. Tipu Tib, a Negro trader in slaves and ivory from Zanzibar, East Africa, was the first civilized man to penetrate the center of Africa. He explored territory nearly as large as the United States. Stanley, Wiseman, Cameron, and other white explorers followed in his path. He died in 1905, very rich. Number 26. For 2,234 years, human beings had been trying to reach the top of the world. Thousands of lives and millions of dollars were lost in the attempt. On April 6, 1909, Matthew Henson, a New York Negro, was the first of a party of six to do so. He is now the only human being alive to have stood there as of 1943. The first Arctic explorer was Pythias, a Greek, who perished in the attempt in 325 BC. Science and Invention Number 27 Jan Ernest Matzeliger, a Dutch West Indian Negro living in Lynn, Massachusetts, invented the first machine for sewing the soles of shoes to the uppers. This invention, which was 11 years in the making, revolutionized the industry and gave shoe supremacy to the United States. It made several millionaires, one of whom left $4 million to Harvard University. Overwork and privation hastened Matzeliger to his grave in 1889 at the age of 37. He left a few shares of stock to a white church, which later saved it from being sold for debt. Number 28. George Washington Carver of Tuskegee Institute, one of the world's greatest agricultural chemists, was awarded to the Roosevelt Medal in 1939 for distinguished service in the field of science. From the peanut, he has extracted 285 products and from the sweet potato, 118. Dr. Carver was born a slave. 
Thomas Edison once offered him a large salary to take charge of one of the Edison laboratories, but Carver refused in order to continue the work he had begun with Booker T. Washington at Tuskegee Institute. Jews and Ethiopians Number 29 The Mohammedans believe that Moses was a black man. Their Bible, the Quran, says so. God told Moses to put his hand into his bosom. The Quran says that it came out white. The commentators declare that Moses' hand could not have been white before and that the miracle God intended was making the black skin white and then turning it black again. The Septuagint or Greek Bible agrees with the Quran as well. Number 30. The characters of the Bible are largely Negroes. The Jews were slaves to the Egyptians for nearly 430 years. Only 70 Jews went to Egypt with Jacob. The Bible says that 600,000 men left with Moses, which according to Halshalfer, meant a total of 3,154,000 with women and children. For this large number to have left mixing with the Egyptians, who were black, must have taken place on a vast scale. About 12 million Negroes were brought to the New World. Imagine how much of their original color and culture the latter would take with them should they try and return to Africa and you realize how much of the original Jew remained in only those 70 Jews after four centuries. Tacitus, a Roman historian of 90 AD, says that the Romans of his day popularly believed that the Jews, which then abounded in Europe, came from Ethiopia, the land of the blacks. The present white color of the European and American Jew is very likely due to the same cause as the fair skin and straight hair of large members of Negroes. The Bible classes the Ethiopian and the Jew together. Are ye not as the children of Ethiopia unto me, O children of Israel, saith the Lord? Chaldea, the land in which the Jews originated, was also a Negro land, hence Abraham might also have been black. Number 31. The Falashas, or Negro Jews of Ethiopia, led by Queen Judith, put the line of Solomon and the Queen of Sheba off the throne of Ethiopia in 937 AD and ruled for 40 years. The Falashas assert that they are the original Jews. They call themselves the Beta Israel, or the Chosen People. Number 32. The Negro Jews of India are not permitted to enter the same synagogues as the white ones, nor to bury their dead in the same cemeteries. Medicine Number 33 Imhotep of ancient Egypt was the real father of medicine. He lived about 2300 BC. Greece and Rome had their knowledge of medicine from him. In Rome, he was worshipped as the Prince of Peace in the form of a black man. His Ethiopian portraits show him as a Negro. Imhotep was also Prime Minister to King Zosser, as well as the foremost architect of his time. The saying, eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die, has been traced to him. Hippocrates, the so-called father of medicine, lived 2,000 years after Imhotep. Number 34. Abin Ali, an African Negro, was a private physician to Charles VII, King of France, from 1403 to 1465. When the king fell dangerously ill at Toulouse, Abin Ali was sent for and he cared for him. Thereafter, the king made him a member of his suite. Number 35. Dr. C. Tavares, an African Negro, was the private physician to King Carlos I of Portugal until the latter's death in 1908. Number 36. Dr. Daniel Williams, 
A Chicago surgeon who died in 1931 was the first to perform a successful operation on the human heart. Politics Number 37 France has had six colored cabinet ministers. Severiano de Heredia, 1887, Senator Henry Limery, 1915-1918 and 1934, Alcide Delmont, 1928, Blaise Diagne, 1931, Gratin Candice, 1932, Gaston Monerville, 1937, De Heredia, as Minister of Public Works, built some of France's finest roads. Number 38. Eugene Chen, one of the most dynamic political figures of the present century and Minister of Foreign Affairs for China in 1927, was born of Chinese Negro parentage in Trinidad, West Indies, in 1878. He was also secretary to Dr. Sun Yat-sen, first president of China. Race Mixing Number 39 Persina, a queen of Ethiopia, 60 BC, presented her husband, Hedopsis, with a light-colored child, which color is strange among Ethiopians. She declared that it was due to the presence of a white statue in the room at the time of conception. Similarly, Maria Theresa of Spain and Austria, wife of Louis XIV, King of France, bore him a mulatto daughter in 1665. The queen spent most of her time with a negro dwarf named Nabo, while the king passed most of his with the beauties that thronged his court. The doctors explained the color of the child by saying that the black man looked at the queen. It must have been a very penetrating look, said the king, wrathfully. A noted writer of that time attri attributed the color of a similar child born to a high noblewoman to the mother's fondness for chocolate. Number 40. Anna a Negro servant girl of Salavecchio, Italy, wife of a white mule driver, became the concubine of Pope Clement XII. Her son, Alessandro, born 1511, became reigning Duke of Florence and married Margaret, only daughter of the Emperor Charles V, ruler of Germany, the Netherlands, Austria, and Spain in 1536. Number 41. White American slaveholders used to induce white women to marry Negro slaves in order to hold the women slaves for life. Number 42. Thomas Jefferson, third president of the United States and father of the Declaration of Independence, was the father of a large number of mulatto children. His wife protested loud and long to no avail. Patrick Henry, another signer of that document, had a Negro son named Melanchthon. Number 43. Napoleon planned to solve the color problem in Haiti by making it legal for each man to take three wives, one white, one mulatto, the other black. He had several conferences with the theologians on this grand measure and tried to win the consent of the Pope. Number 44. In 1787, while a party of 351 freed Negroes was aboard ship at Portsmouth, England, en route to Sierra Leone, West Africa, the authorities brought on board 62 white women, prostitutes, and others whom they wished to get rid of, and married them to as many men and sent them off to be the future mothers of the colony. Number 45. In the 1850s, Mrs. Le Bon, an English woman, was queen of the slave traders at Rio Pongo, one of the principal slave posts in West Africa. She had a fort armed with a cannon and armed by 300 devoted blacks. She had three mulatto children by a negro, a boy, and two girls. One of the latter married a white slave trader and the other a British consul. Number 46. 
The Countess de Beauharnais, who was related by marriage to Napoleon, married a full-blooded Haitian Negro named Castaing, who was a member of the Paris Convention of 1792 to 1795. Religion Number 47 The oldest, most noticed statue in the world bears the face of a Negro. It is the Sphinx of Gizeh, which was worshipped as Horus or Harmakis, the sun god of light and life. It was erected about 5000 BC. The devil which is now depicted as black was once portrayed as white. When the black man dominated the planet, he painted the forces of evil white. When the whites came into power, they shifted the colors, but as late as 1590, the Ethiopians still depicted their gods and heroes as black, and their devils and villains as white. Father Fernandez, a Catholic missionary, who worked amongst them at this time says, They paint Christ, the Blessed Virgin, and other saints in black form, and devils and wicked men white. Thus Christ and his apostles are black and Judas white. Annas, Cyphus, Pilati, Herod, and the Jews are white, while Michael is black and the devil white. Number 48. Nearly all of the ancient gods of the Old and New World were black and had woolly hair. Buckley says, From the woolly texture of the hair I am inclined to assign to the Buddha of India, the Fuhai of China, the Zaha of the Japanese, and the Quetzalcoatl of the Mexicans, the same and indeed in Africa, or rather, a Nubian origin. In the Bible, God, or the Ancient of Days, is described as having hair like the pure wool. The earliest statues of the Virgin Mary and Christ in Europe as far north as Russia were black and negroid. Number 49. The Bible really originated in ancient Egypt where the population, according to Herodotus and Aristotle, was black. Here, the Jews received almost all of their early culture Professor Breasted, leading Egyptologist, says, The ripe social and moral development of mankind in the Nile Valley, which is 3,000 years older than that of the Hebrews, contributed essentially to the formation of Hebrew literature. Our moral heritage therefore derives from a wider human past enormously older than the Hebrews, and it has come to us rather through the Hebrews than from them. Number 50. Psalms that read like those of the Bible were written by a pharaoh, Ammonaphus IV, better known as Akhenaten, the heretic king, 1300 BC, or more than 400 years before David was born. Akhenaten, who was the father of Tutankhamen, was extremely Negro in type. He is called the most remarkable of the pharaohs.